Coming up on Mountain News this morning, students with the University of Pikeville are now taking all their classes online in an attempt to flatten the curve of COVID-19. And we go to Harlan County where one funeral home is providing a new way for family and friends of loved ones to watch funeral services while complying with social distancing restrictions. And in our nation's capital, another vote is expected today after progress on a coronavirus relief bill came to a halt this weekend. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is now 631 and I'm Lacey Roberts. Thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. And it actually feels pretty nice outside. I know these past couple days in the weekend we've been dealing with all this rain, Brandon, and we're kind of used to it now. But what I'm looking forward to is that sun you've been teasing us about. Mm, Thursday. I'll give you a sneak peek of that already, but let's take a look at what's going on this morning. And of course, another reason it's good to have the WYMT weather app. I just got an alert that there is some lightning been detected near hazard and there it is. You see those little streaks right there in those northern Perry County storms, and we're seeing some lightning and thunder across region. Lacey and I were actually just listening a couple minutes ago. We heard the thunder outside the WIMT studios here in Hazard. So again, uh, some thunder and lightning could be flashing around this morning and heavy rain as well. Temperatures, 40s and 50s as you head out the door this morning. So a fairly mild morning right on cue. Did you hear that? All right, let's see what's going on with the coffee meter this morning. A normal day, maybe just a little extra just because of the simple fact that it's a Monday. Your trend today, upward a little bit. We'll see temperatures get into the mid 50s today, but those rain chances will continue before coming before becoming more scattered this afternoon. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, we can hear it now. Usually the University of Pikeville is full of students at this time of year. However, officials have canceled in person classes as a precaution to COVID-19 virus being spread. Now students are taking all their classes online. UPike President Dr. Burton Webb says as a product of their family mentality, they are still allowing students to live on campus. Many of our students uh, don't have good internet access at home or they have food insecurity or housing insecurity. And so we needed to provide a place where those students could still eat regularly and have a safe place to live. There are around 125 students who are living on campus right now. Officials with the University of Pikeville have not made a decision to hold a graduation ceremony this spring. A local pharmacy hopes to put its customers' minds at ease with a curbside pickup option. Economy Drug has served the Pikeville community for more than 50 years. The business is now offering not only pharmacy pickup, but retail pickup as well. They have a variety of items inside the store from candy to cards. Co-owner Mary Beth Mullen says they have always cared for their customers, and this is just another way to help the community. We have a large elderly population and we want to make sure that they feel comfortable in coming to see us. There's a lot of ways we can still serve you even, you know, during these troubling times. Mary Beth Mullen says you can call them or use the RX local app to order your medications. We have steps listed on our website for an easy download for you. A Harrison County Hospital is taking further precautions to prevent the coronavirus outbreak. Harrison Memorial Hospital helps provide guidance to whether or not an individual needs to get tested for COVID-19. The cough clinic is a walk-in health center that does not require an appointment. The clinic hopes to give people a quick diagnosis for the coronavirus and other common illnesses. That's why we're calling a cough clinic because really and truly uh, there's there's still quite a few cases of flu in our community. Uh, there's still people with strep throat with other uh, viral infections. Now Harrison County had its first confirmed COVID-19 case in the state. The cough clinic is open every day from 1 until 8. Ann Everett's funeral home in Harlan County is providing a new way for family and friends of loved ones to watch funeral services during this coronavirus outbreak. WIMT's Code of Dakota Makerist met with the funeral director and has more on how the funeral home is doing this. A governor mandate during the COVID-19 pandemic. We're doing everything we can to try and help the families during this difficult time only allowing the immediate family or those listed in an obituary to attend a funeral service of a loved one. We started searching for something to be able to help families still be able to grieve, allow the community to still be able to participate with the funerals. After searching, 
funeral director Joshua Shackelford found a solution, streaming funeral services on Facebook Live if the family allows it. With their explicit permission only, will we do anything live on Facebook? And we do have it to where only the service is broadcast. Using Facebook Live is like a virtual receiving of friends. Just watching the comments during the funeral, I mean, just it just lit up. I mean, you know, people that couldn't actually be here or didn't know how to contact the family, they were able to just leave a comment, you know, if nothing more than praying. And giving those comments to the family. What we've done, we've actually printed those comments out. We've actually taken photos of the uh, floral arrangements and gifts that were sent and, you know, just give the, everybody the ability to still participate. Using Facebook Live as a tool to connect those who could not be a part of the funeral service. In Harlan County, Dakota Makeris, WYMT Mountain News. The funeral home said Facebook Live will still be available to families even when Governor Bashir lifts the mandates. And with the amount of cases in Tennessee rising, the state now has its first COVID-19 related death. Health officials confirmed the death on Friday night. Officials say the patient was a 73 year old man with underlying health conditions that died due to complications from the coronavirus. A second death was confirmed on Sunday afternoon. This patient also had underlying conditions. Tennessee now has more than 500 confirmed cases of COVID-19 statewide. Another procedural vote on the coronavirus stimulus bill is set for today, less than 24 hours after Senate Democrats halted the movement on the proposal, saying it does not do enough to protect American workers. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says if this bill does move forward, more Americans will fall into a financial hardship. Our nation cannot afford the game of chicken. Doctors, nurses, Small business employees, laid off Americans and vulnerable seniors need our help right now. That bill will be up for another vote later today. And as of this morning, the World Health Organization reports that there are more than 294,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus worldwide. Sewers across Nebraska are stepping up to lend a hand to help protect hospital workers from the coronavirus. Ashley Richardson reports. Everybody wants to help. I've never seen people want to help like they do here in Nebraska. It's red. Meet Jenny Gallagher. She's a nurse practitioner from Plattsmith. She loves to sew in her spare time, so now she's combining her two passions to help make face masks for healthcare workers battling the coronavirus. Somebody was asking about needing masks. Just little masks because everybody's out. And I thought, I'm not on the front lines, I'm not working in a hospital, I'm not in an emergency room, but I'm a nurse. And so my goal was to try to help and press it. The masks are reusable and washable. Gallagher says they're pretty simple to make. It takes less than 10 minutes per mask. It's just simple. You attach them, iron them, pleat them, and then run elastic through the sides. I found a YouTube video and I'm following the directions. Not only is she making the masks, she's also working to bring people together during this time of uncertainty. She created a Facebook group, Nebraska's Hands and Feet, so people in need of anything can reach out to people who can help them. I thought, surely there's something I can do to make this better and more streamlined. So I did. I started a Facebook group, started inviting people, trying to put people with needs together with people that are helpers. And that's how we got here. Gallagher is spreading a message of kindness during this challenging time. Now she's hoping this movement will take off. She says just one person can really make a difference. I'm working on masks for Stephanie in North Platte. And as the group grows, we're gonna help people all over the state. On your side, Ashley Richardson, Six News. Again, that Facebook group is called Nebraska's Hands and Feet, and there are dozens of great YouTube videos showing you how to make face masks at home if you'd like to get in on that action. And when social distancing forced an eight-year-old's birthday party to be postponed, his Indiana neighborhood stepped up to help him celebrate 
from a distance. Caden McCorkle turned eight on Friday and was looking forward to celebrating his birthday with all of his friends, but COVID-19 concerns, of course, have prevented that. At the suggestion of one of their neighbors, Caden's mom turned to their tight-knit Williamson Woodland neighborhood community on Facebook to help request a birthday surprise for Caden. She said, you should have everybody make signs for him so that he can see him when we go on our walks. In all, around 20 houses put up signs wishing Caden a happy birthday. Some even met him on their porches with music and one made him a pinata. Even though he could not be with his friends and extended family, Caden says the signs made his day just a little brighter. Tonight's sky may be a little bit brighter this morning as you head out the door because we are seeing some thunder and lightning across the area. The sky rumbling across Hazard here and probably some other folks there going into Knott County there with that cell. But we have rain across all of the area this morning. It's starting to dry out a little bit in some spots, but it'll come in waves today. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s as you head out the door on this Monday and they will get into the mid 50s this afternoon because of the fact that we are going to see that cloud cover and those chances for rain continue through much of the day. 55, the official forecast time. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you for joining us for Mountain News this morning. Coming up, deputies continue the search for a Leslie County man who has been missing since crashing into a creek this weekend.